Well, hello again. This is the last part of making a new alloy steel screw for my Vivo 6 inch milling vise. And in this one, you'll see me machine this hex on here, press on a thrust collar, and then put the whole thing together. And then we're done. Just in case you didn't think that British people were strange enough already, on the end of this video, I've dropped on a clip of Morris dancers at Robin Hood's Bay. That's about 50 miles from here. I think it's some light-hearted fun. So I'm just setting up on the table here for milling the hex on this end here. And we're going to use a collet at this end, 20 millimeter collet, in this 5C adapter, in this spindexer. And I'm using the spindexer because I've got the tail stock for it, so I can get the bar absolutely level on this table. And I need to set this, which is kind of free at the moment, can waggle around. Before I clamp it, I need to clock it. And I can't clock it on a screw thread, so I'm going to use this 16 millimeter bar, which I'll put in, and we'll clock it on that. Get this pointing down the table true, and then I'll clamp it. And then the tailstock, that'll more or less look after itself, won't it? Now, as I'm doing this, I want to ask you a question. Now, this is nothing to do with machining, and please don't be offended by the question and get all upset. But tell me what has happened, if you speak English, what has happened to the use of bring and take? Let me get the clock and I'll explain what I mean. Bring and take, it's a directional thing. You use the word according to the direction, your perspective versus the subject. So you say, take it with you or bring it here. So it tells you the direction. But my grandchildren and some of my children now are just using bring for everything. And it sounds so weird. So I was with one of my daughters at the coffee shop. She had a drawing book and she said, oh, I'll bring it with me. And I'm thinking, how can, how can you do that? You can take it with you because we're both together. And it's like come and go. Same principle exactly. You know, go over there come here, depending on the perspective of where you are relative to the person you're talking to. I should be really clocking this, but I'm concentrating on the bring and take thing. So I thought, well, maybe it's just me. Maybe it's archaic and, you know, it's gone out of use and I'm just out of touch as usual. But no, not according to AI and all of that. It's telling me, no, bring and take is still uh, in proper use. And when I say to my grandchildren, or even my children, why, what happened to take? And they're going, uh, Dad, you know. <laughs> what was it one daughter said to me? I think that ship has already sailed. <laughs> so I don't know. But if you do comment on that, please don't be offensive. I don't know how people use bring and take in America or Australia or Canada or anywhere else for that matter, and I'm not getting, not getting any nearer to this, so I'm going to have to concentrate on this now. 20 millimeter collet now. I've got the collet uh, screw with the bearing in it, so you can get it much tighter. Well, there's always some little problem, isn't there, lurking to catch us out. For reasons I cannot explain, the body on this spindexer has got tight look. It wasn't like that before. Now, I thought I might have clamped it down unevenly and twisted this casting. No, it's not that. This is loose. So why has this suddenly gone tight? Half a mil cut. I think we could be going a bit faster than this, couldn't we? Let's do that. It's making quite hard work of it. They're only cheap inserts, that might be the reason. We're going to have to go steady, aren't we? Take a bit of time. Just 0.2 mil this time. That's a bit more comfortable. I 
about 600 RPM. I think we'll just keep going at this. Finish cut on this face. Now I'd already machined two opposite faces to the full depth to check that I've got the size of the hex right. And it's going to be about 19.5 millimeters across when I finished. Last cut, last face. So if all's well, this handle will go on. Looks all right. I mean, if it goes on one way, it should go on the other ways, shouldn't it? Three ways, is that right? Three opposite faces. Good, we can take it out now. Let's make use of the daylight by the door. So the last thing to do is to put that on. So I think, what do you think? I don't know. If I warm that up, do you think it'll just drop on? Shall we try that? If it gets stuck, I'll just put it in the press. Now, I have the option to weld this collar on as well for double security, but as somebody said in a comment, if I do, I might have problems with hardness. Not so much with this ring because it's EN8 1040, but with the alloy steel I might. So we'll try not to weld it. Nice and blue, here goes. No, I'm going to end up pressing that on. I wasn't quick enough. Oh dear, it's all wonky. Well, that's what we'll do then, if I can find a sleeve long enough. Oh dear. We'll give it a bit of heat. I said to my son, I haven't used the press in months. That was two days ago. Even that bit of heat helped. I don't think it's excessively tight, but I may have to true it up. It looks well seated. We'll see. Just for once, I had the right tube to put it on. Cow. <laughs> Guess what? Right. You know, that looks okay. Got some light on it. Yeah. Oh, got a mark on it there. Never mind. Five one hundredths of a millimetre, so two thou. Well, as it's set up anyway, I'll just give this face a very quick light skim. I don't know if it's the weather, but everything has gone stiff today. The cross slide is stiff. The top slide is stiff. The spin dexter seized up. I don't know what's going on. That'll do. Let's try the bearing. That's it. Oh, I think that's all right, look. Ooh. Now then, I've got to admit something to you. Look at the end of this. Can you see it's going up and down slightly? Now, I, w I wasn't sure if I was going to admit that, but it's happened this way, so I'll tell you, that is a bit of stress relief in that screw. 
I think with machining that drive shaft. I'm sure that's what it is. It's not much and it would have been a mistake to put a bearing on the end of this because that would have given me a lot of problems. But as it is, with a bit of play in that bush there and it doesn't affect the nut, I think we'll be okay, but we shall see, won't we? Mmm. Ah, but look at the original. Now it's only gripped in the three jaw, but still, I think there's a bit of wiggle on that. It's the same when I run it from the other end. But it's no worse than the original, that's for sure. It started to appear as I was threading. So that's why I think it's a bit of stress relief. Well, the big day has arrived. All that remains is to put it together and hopefully it'll go fine. Somebody asked me, did I have a follower rest? Well, I do. We might have needed it to cut this thread, but it seemed to be okay. There was clearly a bit of spring in this as I worked on it, but I did a few spring passes and that was enough to clean it up. So I didn't need it. We would probably call this a traveling steady, but it's the same thing, obviously. Right, off we go then. Now I put a new bush in here, in case you didn't see that episode, with an oiler point. And it's a bit tighter than I thought it should be. Slightly, only slightly. But it does mean that I need to screw this in. So it's nominally 24 millimetres. Just a minute. There we go. It'll need a bit of a tap once it's off that thread. That follower rest is also good as a light stand. Now for here, I got a 24 millimeter wave washer which you'd typically find on the bottom bracket of a bicycle. Do they still call them a bottom bracket? But it's where the pedal shaft goes. That's what they used to call it anyway. It's probably called something fancy now. Who knows? Now, I'm gonna do something about this. I don't know what yet, but on the end of that is just a point. And I don't like that idea because I think it might damage the thread. So I might just look for a little bit of something to go in there. I've just cut the end of a brass screw. It's probably slightly shorter than I'd planned, but it should do the trick, I think. And then I've replaced that pointed grub screw with a dog point screw. And that's better than damaging the thread. There we are. Feels good. I've just remembered I meant to make a protective sleeve for this so that we couldn't get swarf into this bearing. This is the best I can manage at the moment. I cut the end off a transparent plastic tube but it still needed a small split in it. I might be able to make something better later. Zip tie that on. Is it going to catch? Yes. <laughs> Never mind. Do you know, I'm going to leave it like that. It's good enough for now. 
I'll work out something else another day. Did you notice that I'd put this nut on the wrong way around? This hooky bit needs to point this way. Somebody made a comment to me that Max Grant had found these ways are very soft. And here's a warning then, I found the same. See that scratch there? When I put the jaw on, the moving jaw, I got a little bit of swarf underneath it. And that was the effect. Didn't take much. Do you know, I don't remember a single mistake making this screw, you might correct me. And I'll bet I've made 10 putting this together. I don't know. Goes like that sometimes, doesn't it? Anyway, I'm pleased with that. That project's done. Just another day at Robin Hood's Bay.